Hi, this is Paul at Focus Pulling. I just got the Atomus Shogun yesterday. They arrived in the United States a little later, but I thought at this point I'd create something that doesn't go over ground that's already been covered. And that really begins with the video that Atomus released to coincide with the shipment of the Shogun itself a couple of weeks ago. It's really thorough, it goes through all the menus, and it talks about some trailing issues in the firmware, including the ability to play back footage in the device that will be addressed, they say, in the next few weeks. So be sure to check that out first, and the link is in the caption to this video. So everything you've heard about this thing is true. It comes in a really tough case, looks like it's ready for battle, even if it has a cartoon on the front. And when you open the thing up, you find a really generous array of accessories, not only what you would need, but what you might need. And it starts with five hard drive caddies, four slotted into the case, that I'll talk about later, and then also one battery that's really small, and another of the same form factor that's actually just a dummy DTAP adapter. Looking at the unit itself, there's a big label over the top that welcomes you to the family, and also warns you that you should download the latest firmware, which is something you'll be doing regularly, as they've promised to most importantly add playback capability, but also more codecs and more camera compatibilities in the future. Then you find a sticker that tells you there's more stuff, and when you take out the top compartment, you find an XLR breakout cable with stereo in and out, a car DC adapter, and a wall AC adapter for live powering the unit. But separate from that, a charger unit, and the AC adapter for that with universal international adapters, and lastly, a USB sled that lets you download your footage from the caddies. At that, Atomus does have a tentative official list of supported solid-state drives, and there's a whole bunch of SanDisk disciples saying that's the only thing you should get. But the crew will work for me fine, and it's just a matter of collecting data from the net. But you may need a spacer to make it fit into the caddy tight. So the first thing I was interested in was seeing what I could get out of the Panasonic GH4 using 10-bit 422 color, going via HDMI straight into the Shogun. And for audio, I hooked up a Rode Stereo Video Mic Pro X. But what I found was that by default from the factory, the Shogun records both the stereo XLR inputs as the first pair of tracks and the HDMI stereo stream as the second pair of tracks. And when you import into your video editor, you might need to use the audio channels or similar function to allocate the active channel to what you want to hear. So here's the glorious 10-bit 422 color coming out of the GH4 into the Shogun with a Film Convert plugin applied for color correction. But this is what you see on the monitor with 8-bit output from the GH4 with overlays. And you can see that there's focus peaking, which I found works a little better than the complaints I've read. But something seemed weird about the Zebra tool in the Shogun. As you increase the exposure past 100%, which is where I set the threshold, the zebras disappear, and then you can see them coming back when I get below again. So I don't know if this is a normal behavior of zebras, but let me know in the comments if you have any advice on what's going on. So you have my apologies for taking so long to get here, but this is where the actual video samples are meant to speak for themselves. And so here you see 10-bit 422 color coming out of the GH4 into the Shogun at full 4K Ultra HD resolution. And then I am flipping over to the internal recording capability of the GH4 8-bit with the more highly compressed codec. And this shot is sort of challenging the internal codec, but not nearly as much as maybe subsequent shots. And motion in a shot is critical to judging the behavior of compression. But here's the critical thing to look at, because we are splitting right down the middle, and the titles speak for themselves, as does the image. But one thing that this begins with is the observation that the exposure seems a little different, and I would assess that part of it is due to the differences in color space, but I find it interesting and I can't explain it. Here's the next set of samples, this time zoomed into the farthest end of the 12 to 35 millimeter G lens. And one rogue thought is the fact that as we move on to the next sample, Exposure to me seems like a really big part of the viability of these tests. And one rule that I obeyed that I find many tests don't is the so-called 180 degree shutter rule, where this footage that I'm shooting at 30 frames per second needs to keep the shutter speed locked at 160th. 
and obviously that has an impact on exposure, and I don't raise the ISO to make up for it. Another test nobody seems to be talking about is hooking this up to a Blackmagic camera. And it makes a lot of sense because not only is the monitor so great, but also um, recording media, particularly from the Blackmagic Pocket, which this is connected to, is just so expensive and limited. So I tried it, and the results were incredibly similar. In this comparison shot, you just cannot see the line in between the two. And that suggests to me that the Blackmagic Pocket's internal 10-bit 422 color with the exact same high bit rate of ProRes HQ that's going into the Shogun as well explains the lack of difference between the two, but it also makes a strong argument for why this is so vital for the GH4. But speaking of the GH4, the biggest factor in play is ultimately the lack of true film color space coming out of the GH4 that you have already in the Blackmagic. It's not even as good as the A7S's S-Log2, but Panasonic has hinted at a firmware update when they would offer something called V-Log, which takes us at least closer to there, and I'm expecting much better results after that. But here and now, I suppose it's a good time for me to shut up, especially after I met this Washington, D.C. legend. He wanted me to call him Street Musician 100, and with the Rode Stereo Video Mic Pro X I've got mounted, I think it's a good occasion to just let the music play without me rambling. Thanks for watching.